Hello, welcome to GMT on BBC World News. I'm Lucy Hawkins. Our top story, how one Facebook user took data privacy to the EU's highest court and won. The court rules that European consumers are not protected from US surveillance of their data. We'll be assessing what this means. Also this half hour, Harry Potter like you've never seen him before. A new series of illustrated books is about to be published and we'll get the first glimpse from its creator. It is now being described as an administrative nightmare. Thousands of businesses might soon have to completely rethink the way they transfer data across the Atlantic. Safe Harbor is an agreement that allowed US companies to transfer and process personal data from Europe without breaking its strict rules. Now, it's existed for 15 years, but it has been ruled invalid today by the European Court of Justice. The challenge to the pact came in the wake of Edward Snowden's revelations that the US security forces could scrutinize EU citizens' data held by U.S. tech firms. Austrian privacy campaigner, he's just a law student, well not just, he's a very impressive law student, Max Schrems, successfully argued that in light of all of this, the U.S. could no longer be considered a safe harbour for data. News then that obviously has implications for issues such as civil liberties and national security as well. With me here in the studio to discuss these is Jim Kulik, the executive director of the Open Rights Group, which campaigns for civil liberties. And from Washington, Washington is Clara Jordan, Associate Director of Brent Scarcroft Center on International Security at the Atlantic Council. Thank you both very much for being with us. Jim, firstly, your reaction to this verdict today? We just got it through a few hours ago. I think it's uh, incredibly sensible and all they're really doing is saying Europeans have a right to privacy. Uh, that has to be respected in the US. The US cannot treat foreigners and US citizens as if they have no right to privacy. That's not to say that surveillance can't take place. Of course, surveillance can take place. Of course, those companies should be able to hand data when asked to the US government. But there should be procedures which make sure that that is necessary and proportionate and it isn't wholesale and it isn't regardless of who those people might be. Are you surprised it's taken us 15 years for to get to this point? Well, it is surprising, um, but in a sense it was Snowden's revelations which really put sharp relief on how bad this arrangement is. Everyone's kind of thought it was broken, it's very badly policed, it's not, doesn't really, you know, it's sort of self-certified, no one's really sure if the companies are, are doing what they say. Um, so we've always thought that Safe Harbour was quite poor as a relationship, even in terms of just normal consumer rights. But obviously if the US government is just wholesale disregarding the privacy rights of EU citizens, that's a very different thing. Clara, do you think Safe Harbour fails the consumer? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Actually, cross-border data flows are one of the, is one of the most important elements of national security. It helps consumer security, convenience, it helps the innovation, it helps prosperity. So Safe Harbor was definitely contributing to the consumers. So what do you think is going to happen now, now that it's been ruled illegal? Um, on national security, from a national security standpoint, what is going to happen is that we will be, it will be more difficult to gather data on potential threat actors, whether we talk about cybersecurity or, or counterterrorism. Uh, but where, where we can really uh, feel the impact of this ruling is, is prosperity. Uh, the global tech companies will have to uh, establish data centers in, uh, in Europe. The costs will be transferred to the consumers. We will uh, no longer be able to harness the, the, the big data that um, these companies were able to, to provide for innovation. So I really feel that the consumer is on the losing end of this deal. Well, one of the key issues, of course, is the issue of counterterrorism. And I have to say that the BBC spoke to Facebook's Director of Policy for the UK and Ireland, Simon Milner, and he asked whether the company used their customers' data to track and identify terrorists. And this is what he had to say. Facebook doesn't track terrorist content. It doesn't monitor people's messages. However, what we do do is rely on reports from the 1.5 billion people using Facebook to let us know when they see things on Facebook that shouldn't be there, including terrorist activity. And then also we get requests for data from the police in this country and elsewhere. There is no algorithm that finds terrorist content. So, Clara, Facebook saying there's no algorithm to find terrorists. They don't provide that kind of data. Do you believe that's not true? Um, no, I do believe that is true, 
but where the data is important that having having a a, a more direct faster access to data that was now allowed uh, under safe harbor allow the intelligence services to, to correlate the data, to really find patterns, to find associations between individuals, and then use it for more directed um, intelligence gathering. Okay, so you're saying the intelligence services themselves have an algorithm. What's your response to well, this, Jim? So I think Clara is right that the real question here is about prosperity, and it's about business. It's about whether we trust those businesses. But the thing that she's admitting is that the US government has decided to gamble that prosperity and say to the US tech sector, well, you know, ultimately, you're making lots of money. We want to use you as a global surveillance network. And we don't really care if we're gambling with your businesses. We're just going to do it. And of course, other countries aren't going to take that. The Europe has stood up and said that's not acceptable. You, of course, you can get data on a request basis for terrorists, but you have to explain how that is done in a proportionate manner. And the US has refused to do that. It's refused to put limitations on surveillance. It's done it in a kind of bulk, we don't care, we're regarding the whole of Europe as potential terrorists kind of way. And of course, no European court is going to say that's OK. So the ball is back in the US court. Is the US uh, capable and willing to do surveillance in a proportionate way where everyone agrees it's necessary and reasonable, or are they going to continue to insist on being able to do what the hell they like? Uh, Clara, what is your response to that? Do you think we're now going to see a big change in how the US manages, treats, stores data and how they do surveillance? I actually think um, we will. Um, one of the reasons is also the current case um, happening in US courts uh, between the Department of Justice and Microsoft which is actually grappling with uh, all these questions about transborder um, data issues. So I really think that um, this ruling in, in connection with the, the DOJ case uh, around, micro, around Microsoft will really force the, the US lawmakers and policymakers to address the issues that arise now with, uh, with transborder data. And Jim, we're talking about the, the wide-ranging implications of today's rulings, Europe and the US. But from your, what you're mm. saying, you think there's now going to be pressure from other company, countries, companies as well around the world yeah. on the US? I think so. I mean, I think the US tech sector have been very, you know, deeply unhappy with what's going on. They, they don't want to be thought of as the world's spies. Uh, you know, they have to have the trust of everybody. And the US surveillance powers aren't just about terrorism, they're about things like uh, commercial data, political activity. So you could see a position where Facebook's data was used, for instance, to spy on SNP members during the independence debate, because that's of national interest to the USA. And you can't, you, you, you really can't have that sort of potential threat, because it undermines everyone's sense of uh, democracy and fair play. So, of course, these companies need this sorted out. Jim, thank you very much for joining us. Clara, good to have you with us from Washington. Thank you so much for your thoughts.